So we do have to move on to our third and final title. I'm really excited. Wallstormer, I feel like you're you're gonna have like very good time with this next title. Um, so let me quickly transition out from this. Bum, 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 bum. So our third and final title, let me bring up um, just the Indicade Festival page so you can see it. Uh, this title is not on Steam. And this is why I really encourage you all to go to places like uh, Itch if you enjoy indie games, because this is a game that I would have never discovered had I not A, been connected with Indiecade and they were able to show me this amazing title, but B, this is the type of game that probably will only show on, on itch and not really make it to steam. Cause it's not meant to be, uh, at least from when I experience and play it, it's not meant to be a high commercial success. It's not meant to like go and make millions of dollars. It's meant to be a really thoughtful, introspective experience, um, for a very specific audience. Uh, here, let me, let me turn on the music again, just to, just to put on some some cozy tunes. Do, 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 do. That is not the cozy tune. <laughs> that is, it's not, not what you want to hear. Okay. Hey. <laughs> um, I'm actually playing it tomorrow. Oh, wait. The, uh, Babel Royale or Coral Island? <laughs> um, so this final title is called... The Shape of Time. And in The Shape of Time, I'll show you really quick. The reason I'm not showing like the itch page specifically is it's it's pretty sparse. It's not a super detailed or at least like visually detailed page. Um, you can play the game right in the browser. I'm going to be playing it off of the build just because it'll capture just a little bit more um, clearly from the times that I've tried it. But this is a game made by a developer who is specifically trying to explore the relationship between not only like explore time itself and the concept of time in modern society, but conceptualizing time in through game design and in a game space. And I think that is exactly the kind of thing that I personally love to see in games like the ones that I find on Indiecade because they're not titles that are ever going to be like marketable or profitable in that sense of like a triple A like FIFA, God of War, um, you know, all of these really large AAA titles are designed with consumers in mind and, and profit in mind. And they're still amazing titles and series and games, but they're designed for that type of audience. And what's really interesting about indies to me are there are so many games pushing the boundaries, moving away from things that are maybe more traditionally accepted in games, traditionally explored, and really trying to figure out what can be done with the medium. And what's exciting is you'll see games like this happen. And while they might not happen in their true form, like out in a more consumer focused space, what's interesting is you'll see the lessons and the through lines as developers play games like this and explore what they could do design wise. So I think this is one of those types of games that's really pushing the medium forward in a lot of very interesting and philosophical ways that I think isn't as flashy as a lot of games that you might see. So just be, I'm, I'm very excited for this. <laughs> um, let me update the title really fast in here. I'll switch to the Indicade page. Um, again, if you go to Indicade.com, um, there's a whole list of all of the titles of all of the talks that are gonna be happening. Um, you'll see here, I really love Ambition, A Minuet and Power, and I think it was an award winner. Uh, so that one I highly recommend. Excuse me, we just played Babel Royale. We just played Delphini. Oh my gosh, Choppy Copies. This is this is made by the same person who made, um, I forget what the title was, but it was a game about forging paintings and trying to copy them. And this is like the VR version of that, sculpting statues as closely as, as you can to the original. Um, gotta shout out Common Hood. It's a Calvin funded title. They're doing amazing things in terms of building community and spaces separate from society, basically, and capitalist world. Um, 
yeah, so many, so many incredible games. But we're gonna be focusing in on Shape of Time. Boop. Let's have that. Uh, nominated for the Narrative Award, single player, uh, itch.io. Definitely wanna check out Common Hood. It's, it's gonna be really lovely. Um, I'm, I'm very excited. The team's been working super hard. So let me do Shape of Time, make sure that works. Awesome. So there's the itch link if you're interested in also experiencing Shape of Time. I will say uh, there is a content warning. Uh, nothing gory, nothing graphic, no nudity, but there is a lot of um, dots. So there is a, is it tryptophobia? Um, if, you do not, if you do not like seeing a lot of dots, on screen, I do know that happens quite a bit. So just be aware that that's something that you will see visually. I think there are one or two instances of like intentionally uncomfortable sounds happening, like just grating sounds. I'm gonna try and keep an eye on the audio and like dial it down a little bit, but um, I don't have the game memorized. So if I don't catch it immediately, I just wanna give you fair warning that um, yeah, there's, there's that possibility. So yeah, <laughs> I wanted to make sure because I know a lot of folks who don't don't like seeing a lot of dots on screen and um, that's something that's uh, really good to know if you're about to watch something. Oh, of course, Michelle, thank you so much, y'all. Drop some hearts and snacks into the chat for the lovely Michelle heading out. Um, amazing, amazing person. Please check out uh, their stream at Smolecule just very good discussions surrounding mental health as well as indie games. So wonderful, wonderful people. Um, yes, have a good one. I'm playing it right now. Heck yes. Um, so wanted to make sure, give you all that warning. Um, let me update the title, Shape of Time, so that the command is there. And um, Let's, let's get ready and hop in. I will say that thematically, this game has a lot to delve into. Um, for those who aren't uh, able to watch, um, I have a video that I might, I'll ask permission first, but I'll see if I can drop the link to it so you can listen to the audio about some of the thoughts behind the game because uh, even just hearing the intention behind the process was like, it, it changed a lot of, um, and got me to think about a lot that I did not, did not really think about before. Okay, so let me make sure that is capturing. Um, it might take a second to, to load up. Do, do, do. Okay. It looks like that is good. Sweet. Okay, so The Shape of Time. Again, this is by, uh, let me make sure I have it. It's Next Studio, um, Next Studios, and just, again, nominated for the Narrative Award. Super excited. Um, I don't believe there's intense flashing from what I can remember, but I think just in case I might shout that out as well. Um, all right, so we'll click click on the dot. Mechanical clocks. When we talk about time, the first thing that comes to mind is a mechanical clock. Try to feel the movement of time by clicking on the button on the bottom right. Okay. The mechanical clock represents a very clear imagination of time, which is a point-like directional time. It's interesting because I want to keep on beat. <laughs> mechanical clocks were also the time of the industrial age where workers worked under standard time management. It's like these discrete units, very specific. Um, I know it's a standard our community strive to. Oh, thank you, Firestar. 16.45, that's the time right now. Waiting for the digital clock to jump from one number to the next is a wild experience. There's no motion, no movement, no direction, only identical points, but there is nothing between the two points. <laughs> I'm trying to read faster. So I imagine all of the, these dots are just the microseconds, the sub units of time as we're waiting for the next minute to click over. 
but we don't really have any indication of when that'll happen. Oh, there we go. Compression. Okay, I think this is the one I'm gonna turn this down because I think the noise, this is the noise warning. <laughs> We're going to click to compress until it's minimum. Drag together to create a more compact time. Oh! I feel like I feel it viscerally. <laughs> this is stressful. Drown. My heart my heart rate spiked. 4:47:23 p.m. So something is happening. Okay. All right. Oh, 4:47:33 p.m. Something's happening. Oh my gosh, this is literally my watch. Like, I get notifications all the time. 4.47.39. Something is happening. Yeah, if the dots were different colors. Hey, Lysander, welcome in. We're playing um, the sound of, the or the shape of time. Uh, oh, something's happening. Oh. No. <laughs> this is my, this is my, my watch notifications. I actually had to for the first time ever finagle settings because my watch was vibrating like this all the time. Oh my god, this is <laughs> this is literally my day. I know, crafty. I like that sound though. My brain is like this without a watch. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't help like the, the fact that we've now delineated not simply just seconds, but we've got minute, seconds, and then like milliseconds or you know the hundredths of the second it's just like why and it doesn't stop <laughs> is this a commentary of relation with phones and notifications i think that one might be it's the title was drown drowning stall speed and so again this whole game is about and this experience is about figuring out relationships with time um through experience this is called stall speed I certainly feel called out. This is kind of satisfying to click on. See if I can get all the ones that are going slowly. I think. Huh, it feels like it's tilting after a little bit. Everything's going so fast. <gasps> Derailment. Flow. It feels like I'm hallucinating. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of like the the clock that we had at the very start when we talked about mechanical time going by seconds and then digital time. Oh, we have to hold it down. Okay. By the time Heidegger delivered his lecture on the concept of time, new electronic clocks had begun to creep into the historical stage, replacing the cackling rhythm with the smooth fl flow of the second hand. This replacement was comprehensive, dissolving the dot not only visually with the flow, but also orally with the almost silent movement that erased the distinctive mark. Yeah, I guess we don't have... I actually got um, a watch. I, I should have... Oh, I don't have it with me, but I got a little pocket watch and it was the first time I think I'd heard the ticking of a clock in real life in years because this doesn't have ticking. My phone doesn't have ticking, but the pocket watch did. And I thought that was really interesting because I was like, this is loud. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Robo, welcome in. We're playing some indie games, um, Indie games from Indicate, and this one is called The Shape of Time, and each vignette is an experience of time in and of itself. That one was called Memories. 
Reminds me of like when you hit the viscosity of a water droplet, trying to stack it on top of each other so they don't break. We had just put a clock up on the wall a month ago and I had that same reaction. I turned off the TV and was confused at the noise. It's so interesting. And I wonder too, I mean, because time is constructed and it segments our day. And I wonder if especially the more like we talk about flow, right? In that last segment where it's like you are experiencing this continuous movement of time. The sound of it isn't even discrete anymore. It's just, just always happening. I wonder if that like, it's like how I experience time is very much like that where it's just like, oh, it's nonstop. You're going to keep going because there's no sense in just like sitting and listening to the sounds of the ticking, right? Whereas maybe when you're younger and you just, I remember my, my grandparents had like this huge grandfather clock and I love just like sitting and watching that thing because you could see all of the mechanisms working and distinctly like moving through time. But now it's like, if there's no segmentation like that, you might as well just go forever. Oh, what's this? Oh. This is like incense burning. Why am I getting sad? It's because incense, like in Korea, you burn that when you're at your like elders at, at their like little shrine. What a nice way, like, again, in, in delineating time through the burning of an incense stick. That was really nice. <laughs> oh, gosh. So that was decisive. A hundred ghosts were walking along the river in the wilderness at night, and the fo foxes were far away. The, a dust huddles quietly on a sock in the closet. This is excerpted from Just Now by Lou Ann. These are all things happening in that snap moment of time. Just now, an old man playing Go was holding a black piece in his hand, not knowing where to put it, and a very small meteorite fell to the earth. A woman pronounced a man's name in her sleep. Just now, a flower releases its vague and charming scent on the balcony. I want to get this book. <laughs> A girl has just kicked a stone on her way home with her head down. It's like little snapshots of moments in time. Just now a pangolin hollowed out a mountain with a barren with barren vegetation. It's like I'm getting like any everything everywhere feels from this. Waiting. It takes 30 seconds for cookies baking for a cookies baking process to finish. <laughs> Wait. I added the chocolate this time. Will it work? What will it taste like? We're waiting the 30 seconds for the cookie. This is very ADHD experience, yeah. I'm looking forward to sharing it with my friends. Retention. The primal impression is the single sound you hear at the moment. Also, okay, this is just as a side note. That last one, all of this, but that last one is one of those reasons why it's like, instead of just saying, imagine what it feels like to wait 30 seconds, the process of waiting, what does that feel like? Instead, the game made us wait 30 seconds. It said, instead of telling you about it, I'm just going to make you do it. And I think that's so good. That's so good. Oh, and thank you, Crafty. Yeah, that uh, it said the excerpts were pulled from Just Now by Lou Ann. And so wherever, whatever that is, I'm going to purchase it. Book, poems, poster, I don't know. But that was really beautiful. 
Oh. When you don't have anything except just the note, it's like, how can you tell if it's, what song it is? It's just the moment that you hear that sound. I wonder if I can click faster. But the time is a field carefully experienced. Without the past retention, you cannot hear the melody. If marked linearly, it will appear the structure as... You've got a line there. Oh, your dog does not... The little spurts of like the violin viola sound. This is the mostly untapped power of games, right? It's so good. It's only in... The developer is, is a Chinese developer, so... <sighs> Dang. We all got to start learning. <laughs> is this like the actual mathematical... Wait. My brain is not smart enough, but that looked very impressive. Time preservation. I want to leave something for others. Put together the assets, the code and the passion of the creator. Oh, this is like note from the dev. Here's the code. Here's an asset. <laughs> Here's the passion of the creator. Oh no, it didn't like Bongo Cat. Sorry, ad hoc. Yay. Oh, and look, we've got the, um... oh, I forgot what it was called, but when the, the dots were all moving, I want to use the game to keep those times to share with you. 36,500 days. Quick math, is that a year? No, that's not a year. That's, is that the lifetime of a person? Mama, oh, right here we've got an age 11. I was bullied at school. A lifetime in... Oh my god. Why am I crying? <laughs> so now I'm a professional. Remember the girl you liked in the school days? We're at about 30 right now. Bro, congrats on your wedding! We're hitting our mid-30s. Shouldn't be too difficult to land that job, right? My baby, welcome to the world. We're now in our 40s, having a family of our own. It would be nice to give him better living conditions. So concerning, trying to give a good life to your family. Adolescent rebellion is normal, leave him alone. Oh no, oh. Now we're in our 60s. Take care of yourself in other cities, son. Circle of life. Our kid has grown up. Be careful. Your old body can't withstand another fall. Now we're in our 80s. I didn't wear waterproof mascara. Most of my friends are gone, but gratefully you're still with me. What? Zero time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what the heck? And it says, you're so beautiful. Please stay for a while. Why? Game, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's getting me so much towards death. Lightly drag the circle. Ooh. It's just like to see someone's entire lifespan and those pivotal moments sort of compressed into a screen like that. Oh, Ooh. too many feels. I know. Where, <laughs> where's the tissues warning? Oh my gosh. And it's like 
it's weird because part of me is like it's so amazing to see the like the span of a life right but also it's so wild because it's like you can see that all compressed in a screen and that in of itself is also like kind of weird and amazing and happy and sad oh <gasps> i know i'm too fragile hey rhs i know Whew. all right so lightly drag the circle to leave a track oh It's like... So I can move this line up and down. And I think as try as I might, for example, if I wanted to avoid this dot, I can't. No matter what, it is taking me closer to death and to the end the end of the line la tore oh yeah this is incredible <laughs> yeah you can't go backwards you can only go around you have come to the last level what you are now looking at this text box <gasps> are you the are you the same person now and a moment ago you just finished this game. <laughs> There's still time to do what we can to become who we want to be. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, what do you even say after that? <laughs> Whew. Thank you to the devs for making something so good. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, <laughs> this is, this is me reacting raw to the game. Oh, and Scrambles is here. Like, and this is also why I, cause I had seen scenes of this game. I like knew what it was about and but I intentionally did not finish it because I was like I know it's going to be short and we'll be able to work through it together um but like this is what games for me is about like finding ways to do something that ca this could not be done in a movie this could not be done you know in in a book through painting and I think that's what's really exciting about this studio and this team it's developers, he's trying to find ways to experience and conceptualize design of concepts like time in games in ways that can't be done elsewhere. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. let me, let me, let me bring back a little music just to, so you don't just hear my sniffling. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Didn't expect an existential crisis with lunch. But it's like, it was so joyful too, right? Like there was this sort of existential crisis of like, oh my gosh, you know, what is time? What does it mean to face the fact that we have limited time? Uh, what does it mean in terms of our daily lives, how we break up our time and segment our time during the day? Like... It's so, it's so good. It's so good. It makes me think about like summertime, right? When you were a kid in the summer, or at least for me, time felt eternal. Summers felt endless. Like summertime lasted forever. And I thought like as a kid, you know, this is Scrambles. Scrambles is here to say hi. Um, I felt like as a kid, summertime was this thing that like lasted for eternity and I could just do it and... You know, it's just it, it, eventually school would happen again and that would be that. Hi, Scrambles. But now as an adult, like I, I kind of joke about it, but I've been thinking about it a lot also where I live by blocks of time in my calendar and my planner. I live by segmenting my time largely for work and things that I don't even really like 
don't feed me in the same way that hanging out with family and friends feeds me. And so it's weird to think about like how my relationship time has evolved since I was a kid when summers were like endless and I didn't, you know, I didn't care about, I didn't have a calendar. I didn't have a planner. I just did things and yeah, I showed up at school and that was where time was segmented. But like when time was my own as a kid, I had no, no way of tracking it. Um, whereas now as an adult, like the, I think it was drown the segment where it was just all the notifications that were shaped like a watch. And I was like, gosh, darn it. Too familiar. Too familiar. Mood, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spent four years in, in a pit of depression, so now time is weird for me. It's like I jumped forward. Yeah, and I think, I mean, we talk about that a lot, too, with, um, with also how we all collectively experienced a really big and traumatic event, you know, in the form of the pandemic, right? And that's... Everyone talks about how time is different after it, and that's true because we, our relationship with time changed, especially once we were put into one location for an extended period. We changed the way we communicate and relate to one another. Um, and I think this game touches on that as well. Like what happens when your relationship with time changes? Uh, it's, it's so good. Oh. Um, one of my favorite things to do is take a weekend trip to a cabin where I never look at a clock. Singing pigs, you and I, same wavelength. I was just talking about how over um, like the holiday break, my hope is to be totally disconnected from like internet and clock. Because uh, I have a holiday break coming up in two weeks and I was like, I would love to just not even hear the buzz of electricity around. I'd love to just like read and walk in, in, in mud puddles. <laughs> hey, Austin, welcome in. It feels like, in terms of time, it feels like time is even still shifting, honestly, with far less processing time for any of the events that take place. I agree. I think, I mean, we see it in the news cycles, right? We see it every day when we log into social platform of choice, especially now that Twitter is a dumpster fire, uh, which I guess, a new type of dumpster fire but you know things don't stay in the news for longer than maybe a week if we're lucky <laughs> the news cycle is nearly like maybe at a two to three day cycle honestly at this point um if a thing even makes it into the news so I feel like in addition to the fact that we are on individual levels processing time differently, it certainly doesn't help that the things that we use to engage with other people and spend time in, they're encouraging us to process time even more, <laughs> sorry, scrambles, even more quickly um, and even more shallowly than what I think is humans we are naturally supposed to um well thanks fire so i agree and again thanks to this game i'm gonna I'm gonna type it into the chat um shape of time and type it in one more time i highly encourage you like we we went through the game together on stream but i really think uh if you're comfortable again with lots of dots if you're comfortable with some of the uncomfortable sounds um or grating sounds playing this on your own when you have time to maybe think through it a little bit more um, i know i will be playing this again on my own just so i can reflect a little bit more deeply because um this is a game that i think is truly special um i do have Let's see, I have a note from the developer that I wanted to read because I was I was emailing them because I was like, this is incredible and I really want to make sure that your intention gets shared. Uh, so let me grab it really quickly because um, they took the time to write it and I want to be sure to share. Um, so I apologize because there wasn't a pronunciation um, guide for me, but this is the note from the developer. 
I am Zatau, the game maker of The Shape of Time. Here is um, a little bit of note behind the design and inspiration of the game. Uh, the development process was that this game was actually made in a game jam called Boom uh, in China. And so the process was like a planned improvisation, which is wild to me. Um, but it's been it's about what I've been thinking for a long time and taking the game as taking games as a thinking medium and try to create an interface for communication between video games and philosophy. And they've actually had quite a few conversations and even done some podcast episodes with professors of philosophy in Shanghai. Um, so they're trying to really think through what it's like to combine philosophy and game design. Um, let's see. This game belongs to a project called Game Plus in Next Studio, which I push, and I have my own personal media lab, um, and what I've been studying in the history department is thinking about what a game is, and, write, and they're actually working on a book about what games are and philosophy, and so they're thinking about the connections between games like making a poem, doing calligraphy, and even photography. And uh, if you go and follow them on itch, they have other games that are exploring other art forms and how games can convey some of those intentions and experiences. Um, I'm half game thinker theorist and half game maker. And so my game is trying to take some sort of game about X and trying to recreate the genealogy of games in certain aspects. So the goal, because right now we played their game jam version, I think. I'm right now working on polish work with my friend to give this game a more high resolution style. And the goal is to make a, uh, the goal is not to make a well polished perfect work, but rather to explore possibilities and experiments, which could in fact influence peers and the game industry in China. So again, this is why I think indie devs, indie Cade, and spaces like this are so important because these are not games that are, like I said at the beginning and even the developer said it themselves, this is not meant to be high polish. This is not meant to be commercial success, making millions. This is about seeing what can be done. How far can we take the medium? What can we get people to feel and think just by playing a game? Just by playing a 10 minute game with dots and grayscale. I don't even think there was color in that game. It was just grayscale, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. If you want to watch a bunch of interesting things about time perception, I suggest watching some of Tom Lum's videos. Ooh, very cool. You're right, there was red during the cookies, the timer, which is also interesting. I have to think on what, like, there was, because there is so little color, that's like another indicator of like, what what does that mean to you? And what do you think the dev meant by putting that in there specifically? Because the timer could have been black and white. Um, but yeah, that was, that was so good. I genuinely, I did not think I was gonna cry. <laughs> I don't know what about it touched me so much. Um, I think it's also, and this is not an Indicade title, but I recently played A Walk With Yaya. Um, it's a game that just came out last week, I think. And it's another short game. This, I think it runs at about an hour, if that. Um, maybe a little longer if you're going more slowly through things. But A Walk With Yaya is a title about taking your grandmother out on a walk after she's had a, a bad fall. And so this game also deals with this idea of time, but in a more sort of human focused sense of like, your grandmother is facing the fact that she's, had, she's having a lot of last times, a lot of last experiences and is coming close to that end, that like black dot that we were circling. Um, and so I think the combination of playing that game and then playing this game that explores time was pretty impactful. So I'd recommend maybe also checking out A Walk With Yaya, even though it's not technically indicated, I just wanted to shout that out as well.